Let's go! Well, this is it, folks. Bottom of the ninth inning. Florida State needs at least three, or their season will come to a close. They trailed the Arkansas Razorbacks four to one. Hog Nation getting ready to go hog wild, but not before the Seminoles have something to say about it. Seminoles have their rally caps on. We have a new first baseman for Arkansas. Brett Hagedorn comes on to play first base in place of Haas Pratt, who was pinch run for last inning. You know, the lead off hitter this inning, Shane Robinson, what he's got to do, he's got to figure out a way to get on. I know it sounds like a broken record. Jay Sawatsky. Still working his magic. Came out. One out in the eighth inning. Two runners on. Retired the only two men in the face. Sauls and Chapman now working in the ninth inning. <laughs> <laughs> Over 10,000 umpires right there. That yeah, wasn't a strike. <laughs> they thought so, though. 2-2 pitch, hit back up the middle, past the shortstop, Hody into center field. Just with it out the order, Ryan's in time for two, and he'll get there. Oh, dangerous play, but Robinson makes it work. Mike Martin is standing there with his hands on his hips right now going, what the heck, risk not worth the reward there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his players are settling him down. <laughs> One run game, maybe, but down by three. Caught him napping, yes, but wow, if you make it out here, you don't want to go in your, your own dugout. The folks here at Bomb Stadium standing up. Trying to urge their Razorbacks on. They trail, I'm sorry, they're ahead by three. Four to one, bottom of the ninth inning. A win and the Razorbacks are headed to Omaha. We have a pinch hitter here in the ninth inning. Runner on at second base. Nobody out. Grant Peacher hitting for the freshman third baseman, Dennis Anderson. Peacher is yet to take a swing in the Super Regional. This is his first game action. A one pitch, Jay Sawatsky delivers. Third baseman, Goodwin, has the baseball. Throw in time, out number one. The Razorbacks two outs away from a trip to Rosenblatt Stadium. Yeah, but before they go, they've got to contend with Zetch, Drew, and possibly as Martinez Esteve, possibly coming up their last time in a Seminole uniform. These hitters have really got to try to scratch out another base runner right here. Brian Zetch takes a breaking ball, strike one. Zetch hitless so far today, 0 for 3. Another strike. Swatsky's just being very aggressive in the strike zone. Whatever pitch he's throwing, he's being very aggressive in that zone. That's what you like to see from a guy who's coming in to try to close the game out. Nothing in two. The senior Zets trying to battle. Puts the bat on the baseball and it's butchered by Hagedorn. Can't get the hooks around it. And we have runners on at the corners. And look who's coming up. The error by Hagedorn allows Stephen Drew to be the potential tying run here in the ninth inning. 
This is drama at its best. The two guys you want up if you're FSU coming up right now. Hagedorn right here just misplays it. Maybe he tries to backhand it when he didn't have to, but he just kicks off. And that allows, as you said, the tie and run coming to the plate. Unless there's a ground ball double play here, they're going to have to try to get out Stephen Drew and Eddie Martinez Esteve if they want to go to Omaha. And you know what? That's the way it should be. That's yeah. right. This is what Mike Martin, this is the best he can hope for. A home run and we're tied. Lefty on lefty. Stephen Drew takes downstairs. Now this has really been a difficult couple of games for Stephen Drew. Just one base hit. He came yesterday afternoon. It was a single. One for nine. Two strikeouts in two games. 1-0 pitch. Slow breaking ball in there. Well, what I've seen in Steven the last two days has been a little bit out in front. If he can just kind of hone it back in and keep his hands back and just let his natural power do the work, he doesn't have to try to pull it out of here. There goes the runner from first. Not paying attention to him at all. They don't care that Zetch moves into scoring position. The run that counts is the run in the batter's box. I don't know if they call that defensive indifference here or not, but it doesn't matter, as you said. But what it does do is take away the possible ground ball double play. 2-1 pitch just downstairs. In the on-deck circle, Eddie Martinez Esteve. Who loves to hit in these situations, absolutely loves it. There he is. He's chomping at the bit over there. Sawatsky kind of wriggle out of some trouble. Ball hit well to left field. On his horse is Duggar. Makes the play. Out number two is recorded. Runner tags up. Comes in from third in the form of Shane Robinson. Call it a sacrifice fly. But Stephen Drew is retired for out number two. The Razorbacks one out away from Omaha. That was a tough play right there by Duggar. He made, a real, made that look really easy. Ball slicing away from him, going to the line there. Really got a good jump and a good read and made a nice play. Eddie Martinez Esteve loves these situations. We asked him about it just yesterday. Situations when your team needs you, when you know, when when there's runners on second and third, there's two outs in the bottom of the eighth. You know, that's the time that I wish and I was up at the plate. You know, and I have faith in all my teammates and stuff, but it's just uh, something in my heart. And just I get goosebumps. Just can't wait to get up to that opportunity. Well. He asked for it, and he got it. He represents the potential tying run. If he makes it out, the Florida Seminoles' season is over, and more than likely, Eddie Martinez Esteves' college career is over. Second round draft pick of the San Francisco Giants back on Monday. He'd love to continue playing collegiate baseball in Omaha. Pitch misses outside. He went to the same high school as Doug Mankiewicz and Alex Rodriguez. Great lineage there. He's in a pressure situation. Can he step up? He's done it all year. 1-0 pitch upstairs. 2-0. You know, it's a tough situation. You, you want to be careful, but yeah, you don't want to put the tying run on base as well. Bring the go-ahead run at the plate. You know, you don't want to fall into the trap of coming right after him and hits the ball out of the ballpark to tie the game. But you don't want to put him on first base either. Upstairs 3-0. We should remind folks that, just in case you're wondering, even though we are playing here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the home stadium for the Razorbacks, technically Florida State is the home team. So this is the bottom of the ninth inning. If they can get five runs, this game would be over. 3-0 pitch right down the heart of the plate. That was a good pitcher's pitch on 3-0. Kept it down. Runner on at second base. Zetch. Swing and a miss. Going for the downs is Martinez Esteve. Came right at him right there. Good hard fastball up out of the zone. He didn't leave anything in the bag on that swing. Two guys battling cheese against cheese right here. How much do you want to get to Omaha? I'll show you on this pitch. The payoff. Swing and a miss. Oh, my. Sawatsky does it for the second consecutive day.
What a performance by the Arkansas Razorbacks. We talked about it the last two days. They do whatever it takes to get the job done. And they did that today. They didn't get a lot of hits. They got just enough, but they sure got the pitching. They got the pitching. They got the key hits when they needed it. There was something that FSU couldn't come through with. Great ball club out there with the Razorbacks. In case you're wondering what our Pontiac High Performance moment was, you just saw it a couple of moments ago. Jay Sawatsky pouring a laser beam past Eddie Martinez Esteve, the All-American, to give the Hawks a trip to Omaha, Nebraska for just the fifth time in school history. And how, how about the Southeastern Conference, the co-champions of the regular season, both have punched their ticket. And let the celebration begin in Fayetteville. Two consecutive days, two consecutive two-run wins for the Arkansas Razorbacks, and they are off to Rosenblatt Stadium. Four to two is our final score. The big inning, the third. Three seminal errors led to three Arkansas runs. Those three runs would be all they would need, and they win to move their record to 45 and 22, but more importantly, 2-0 oh in the Super Regionals and off to Omaha, Nebraska. Well, they found a way to do it that they've done all year. They're going to be a dangerous team going into Omaha, the way they're playing confidence-wise and the way they're clicking on all cylinders. Momentum, it really carries you from one series to the next. It's a great ball club that's heading over there to Omaha. It's going to be an exciting series to see. No one is happier than that man, Dave Van Horn, coming back to his alma mater. Played here back in 1982, was a wonderful player. Cut his teeth coaching, a couple of different stops. Most recently at Nebraska, went to the College World Series two consecutive years with the Cornhuskers. But now, back replacing his mentor, Norm DeBryan, and taking the Hawks to the College World Series in just his second season at the helm. And he said, I don't even think we were going to do it this fast, but lo and behold, this team came together. He's a great coach. He's got a great coaching staff. His kids have bought into the philosophy. There's Sawatsky right there. It, you know, the belief in the coaching staff and listening to what they have to say, the confidence has built week in, week out, going through the tough Southeastern Conference. Boy, there's your result right there. So the Arkansas Razorbacks picked to finish dead last in the SEC West, come up off the mat, finished in first place in the SEC West, co-champions along with Georgia of the Southeastern Conference. Go on to win the Super Regional in front of a record crowd of over 10,000 here at Bomb Stadium. 10,027 got exactly what they wanted. A Razorback win and a trip to the College World Series. Yeah, I got you. Okay, good. We'll do it right now. Okay. You guys ready to go? Well, Coach, great win for you guys. It must be so special for you to get this done at your alma mater. It's unbelievable, honestly. Uh, you know, coming here was uh, something I always wanted to do since I was about 25. And I had to leave probably the hardest job that I ever had to leave was Nebraska because it's so great there. Uh, but coming home to a place that I uh, graduated from, like I said, met my wife, got married here my first coaching job and come back and win this in front of 10,000 people and my second year is just almost unthinkable. Coach, you got a team of unheralded guys. This, nobody was first team all conference. You were picked dead last in the Southeastern Conference to start of the season. What kind of motivating factor was that when those guys, were, there was no belief from anybody that they could get it done? Well, you know, we knew we were better than that. Uh, we knew how hard we work and uh, that we would, we would battle in the league. We didn't know where we'd finish, but uh, we just posted that up on the bulletin board. We never said a word about it. Just kind of watch guys walk by and shake their head. And 
uh, you know, anyway, we just, uh, you know, we knew we could win, and, uh, and we did. Coach, did you tell Jay Sawatsky to make it interesting in the ninth inning and, and give Stephen Drew and Martinez Esteve a chance oh to get one more look at the... <laughs> yeah, you know what, going through that two and three hole hitter, that was probably the two, you know, two of the toughest hitters in the country. Um, when we didn't make the play at first, I thought, oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, it, nothing ever comes easy. Right. It's been that way all year for this team, though. They have all been nail biters. Uh, I think we've all gotten gray hair, but I'll tell you what, it's worth it. Well, Coach, congratulations. We really enjoyed watching the team over the last couple of days, and good luck in Omaha. Okay, thank you. Okay, good night.